Shalom, everybody. Uh, today we'll conclude the idea of Kaddish, and um, in between there's an idea to add Baruch Hu at the end of davening. Uh, but first, let's just go over the the Kaddish. So the question yesterday was uh, when was all the other Kaddishes added? And um, so the last daf of Sota, uh, page forty nine A and B, discuss all thing all kinds of things about the redemption and the future of the world. And it says that the world exists mainly because of reading Torah and saying the Kaddish after. Uh, so at that time, it was just the, the, the Kaddish Yehesh Lama with uh, the request for the people of Israel to have peace. Um, but then when I was studying passages from rabbinical texts, like the Talmud and Mishnah, uh, they added Kaddish Darabanan. So it was more or less around the same time during the formalization of all the prayers, which was during the time of the Talmud. Uh, that's why the Talmud starts with Masechet Brachot, because it's it's the most common for anybody. Um, last, I had uh, I, I read somewhere in one of the Hasidic books that uh, Tzadik Katamari Frach, that uh, somebody who is righteous, is somebody who, who answers 90 amens. The letter Tadi is, is equivalent to 90. Uh, four Baruchos, 10 Kaddish, and 100 blessings. So uh, that's Tzadi Dalet Yud Kuf. And so uh, to sum it up, basically, uh, we don't want to make uh, to, to make too much of a wait for the people uh, with Kaddishes. But on the other hand, we also want to make sure that if somebody is saying for more than one person, that they can have Kavana uh, for each one of the people that they're saying for. And so if they come three times a day to shul to say Kaddish, uh, even if they're saying for 10 people, uh, they are able to to say to say Kaddish for 10 different uh, people and have one in mind each time. Uh, and I think that that's the maximum. But, uh, but of course, we don't even say their name when we say it. So it's just an idea of, of how to be inclusive. And Ashkenaz apparently, during the time of the uh, earlier... Uh, Galus, I guess, until about 300 years ago, um, they had a custom that only one yatom, only one orphan, uh, says Kaddish, uh, and so um, so if they if they had more than one orphan, then one yatom would say one Kaddish, and then the next one would say the other one. So that's why uh, in a lot of communities we say one after Shir Shayom and one after Aleinu. Sorry, not in that order. In Ashkenaz, one after Aleinu and then after Shir Shayom. But in Yeshiva Selimelech, uh, we usually uh, just do one after both because uh, Shir Shayom, the song of the day, is usually very short or shorter than Aleinu for sure. And um, so that's about the Kaddish. And uh, we'll just learn this idea about Baruch and then go back to Kaddish to, to conclude. For those who arrive at the synagogue late after the beginning of Birkot Kriyat Shema and miss the response to Baruch Hu by the congregation, the Chachamim established that after the prayer service, the Chazan repeats Baruch Hu. The latecomers, along with the entire congregation, answer Baruch Hashem and Baruch Lalam Ba'ed, Blessed is Hashem, the Blessed One for all eternity. That is also how we practice at the conclusion of the Ma'ariv service. Uh, so it's usually said either before Alain or after Alain, depends if you Nusach Spard or Nusach Ashkenaz. According to this, according on Shabbat and holidays, there is no need for the Chazan to say Baruch Hu at the end of the prayer service because it is reasonable to assume that even those who came late, uh, like for after the Baruch Hu of Shema, succeeded in hearing the recital of Baruch Hu by the people called up to the Torah. Uh, on Shabbos we have Eight people, seven plus one, and on, on Yantav we have five plus one. So for sure there's an opportunity to say Baruch Hu. For this reason, those who pray in Nusach Ashkenaz do not recite Baruch Hu after the prayer service on those weekdays on which the Torah is read. However, on days when the Torah is not read, it is always customary to recite Baruch Hu without verifying whether there is someone who needs to make it up or so as not to trouble the congregation to determine if there is a late person present, meaning that you don't have to ask, you just do it automatically, and it's not a bracha levatala, it's just praising Hashem uh, to end the prayer service. Um, according to the Ari, Baruch is always recited after the prayer service, because according to his covenant, it is necessary to say Baruch twice in every prayer service, 
And that's why I said that there's four baruchos a day, the, the two in Shachris and the two in Marv. Once before Birkot Krachma and the second time at the end of the service, the same is true for Ma'ariv. That is the custom of those who pray in Nusach Sephard and the Minag of the Hasidim as well. In every Nusach of prayer, Baruch Hu is recited after Kaddish Darabanan, which is the last Kaddish, so that uh, even the last of the latecomers will succeed in hearing it. It is customary that the one who recites Kaddish says the Baruch Hu as well. Uh, however, sometimes the one reciting the la- last Kaddish is a child who lost a parent and has not yet reached the age of mitzvot. In such a case, the Chazan, who is obligated to perform the mitzvot, must be the one to recite Baruch Hu. So I'll just say that in Bet Knesset Kippah, where my parents prayed for so many years, uh, the Gabbai um, either points or whispers to the person that they are pointing to uh, lead the Baruch Hu at the end. That way you don't have six people saying Baruch Hu, but all of them say Kaddish together. And it's even recommended to stand close together. That way they can keep in tune with each other. Um, so, after Alina Shabbat, there is no need to recite another Kaddish, Yeish Lama, because it was already said after the Shil Shayom, and again in Ashkenaz it's the opposite. Likewise, there is no reason to recite Kaddish on verses of scripture twice within such a short amount of time. Even according to the Kavanot Tahari, there is no room for another Kaddish, and that is the custom of the Sephardim. So the Ari uh, writes somewhere else that um, there should be 12 Kaishas a day, um, and I'm not exactly sure how, but uh, our calculation is 10. And we'll conclude with the laws of Kaish, what do we have, we have to do actually when we hear Kaish. So due to the importance of the Kaish, the laws pertaining to it resemble the laws of the Amida prayer. Therefore, the person reciting the Kaish must stand customarily with his legs together. Also, just as it is forbidden to pass within the four almot of a person praying the Amida, so too it is forbidden to pass within four almot of a person reciting Kaddish. And again, maybe that's the reason why we, we congregate near the Bima, because if people are leaving at the end of the evening, and uh, that, that way they don't pass be, before people who are saying Kaddish. This prohibition a, a, applies until the end of the half Kaddish, uh, some say that since the Kaish is considered to be a matter of sanctity, the congregation must stand when the main section of Kaish is recited, or at least until they answer Yehesh Meir Abba. And so that's the Ashkenazi custom. And the Sephardi custom is if you were already standing, you have to remain standing. And if you are uh, sitting, then you can remain sitting. So Yishtabach um, in the Sephardi custom uh, after Pesukei Zimra is said sitting down, they only stand for Varvach David and they sit down. So the Kaddish between the half Kaddish between Yishtabach and the Berkat Yitzhar, uh, you may sit according to the Sephardim. Similarly, it is necessary to stand when responding to Baruch Hu. Some say that it is not obligatory to stand for matters of sanctity, yet those who were standing at the beginning of Kaddish must remain standing, and those who were sitting before it began may continue to sit, like we said just now about the Sephardi custom. And before the Chazan reaches the last portion of the Kaish, he performs the actions done at the end of the Shemun Esra, which is uh, to take three steps back. He then bows to the left and says, Ose Shalom B'Ramav, bows to his right and says, Huya Ose Shalom Aleinu, and then bows in front of him and says, Ve'al Kol Yisrael Deimru Amen. Uh, by the way, the reason why we turn to the left when we say Ose Shalom and Ramav is because we're talking about the angels, and the angels are to our left, uh, to the right of Hashem. So that's why we bow first to the left and then to the right. Some follow the custom that the Chazan bows slightly at every place in which the congregation answers Amen. Others bow at different places, and there are those who don't bow at all. So just follow your congregation's minag. And there's also, the, last but not least, the actual response of Yehesh Meirabah. There are different customs regarding the response of Yehesh Meirabah. According to the Ashkenazic and Yemenite Minhagim, we conclude, La'alam ul'almeh maya. Okay? According to the Hasidic and Yemenite, uh, uh, the, the Shami Yemenite custom, we add Yitbarach, and that's also in the Mishnah Barah, by the way, as well. According to the Sephardic Minhag, we recite until... Another difference is that after Brichu, 
the Ashkenazim answer Brichu, and the Sephardim and, and Sephard and Hasidim answer Amen. And uh, there's a beautiful Schlock Rock song about that. Um, uh, it says, and if you're Nusachari, uh, forget about verse 3, say Amen. <laughs> so uh, that's how they remind you if you are uh, Sephardi or Sephard uh, to say that. So we will stop the recording.